Hello again! Time for another dragon making! And today we're going to be making a uh, dragon for a friend of mine! Uh, I'm leery about saying people's names online, but we're going to go completely from scratch here because I don't even remember what type of dragon she wanted, aside from the fact that it's going to be using black rings. So we're going to grab some of those, and let's actually just scroll up. I'm going completely blind here, essentially. <laughs> Red! We are making a red dragon. Oh, this is going to be very much like uh, Charlemagne and Cleopatra here. Who is... Oh, that's Josephine. Oh, that's Shade. Oh, that's Josephine again. Oh! Charlemagne and Cleopatra are in my pocket right now. They're kind of watching something for work. Hey, there we are. Black Red Dragon. Hmm. So we're basically going to be doing something like that. So awesome. Let's go pull out the scales and start winging it right now. We're going to need a handful of some red rings here and now. <laughs> Oh, check it out, by the way. I've got new cute little uh, Ziploc bags for my scales. I used to have kind of the bigger long ones. These are better fit. Ooh, upgrade. Oh, goodness, I'm getting all kinds of chaos happening right now. I'm buying some stuff online to more or less upgrade my life and stuff like that. And then uh, my visa needed to be replaced because the which we got the expiration date was coming up, and then they said they sent another one in the mail, but it never showed up. So they'd send, they said that they would send another one, and then immediately after, my current one just stopped working, so they obviously cancelled it. So it's like, okay, most of my uh, transactions have not gone through, and there's literally nothing I can do about it. Uh, my purchases will be cancelled, and I've got to go back and redo all of those things. Once, uh, yeah, my card comes in the mail. So, minor nuisance. <laughs> and I'm trying to do this right, 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 right before work here. Like, I'm starting at close to 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. I need to work at 4. So I'm hoping to do the chainmail portion by about 2.30. Which uh, gives me zero time whatsoever because I have to be at work at 3. I haven't really eaten today. I've basically just stuffed four pieces of bread into me. <laughs> bread and peanut butter and margarine. And then I have a wonderful person texting me at the same time, which is just soaking up valuable time because I have to get this started here. Like, oh my goodness, I have no free time. <laughs> just zero. So we're going to try and squeeze the dragon in today, because that would be absolutely wonderful. And yeah, I have a friend coming over on Wednesday. So that will kind of complicate things a little bit. So I may have this open a little bit beside me because they're messaging me kind of right right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Ooh, be sure to check out my uh, YouTube channel or Facebook and or Instagram and check out my song of days that are posted on there. Ooh, I've got a really, really good one recently, a throat singing one that's sort of like that, but it's really belted out and slow and stuff, and ooh, can't recommend enough. Well, and if you're wondering what this big pile of stuff is here, this is, as far as I know, all of the dragons that I have around here. And I just kind of uh, piled them all with me, kind of took them all into bed with me last night and just had a nice dragon pile. <laughs> and then they all kind of followed me over here for the dragon making. Woo! The birth of yet another dragon. This will be my 60th dragon, actually, which is all kinds of cool. 60th dragon mate, actually. I've adopted three dragons. Or there's uh, two dragons I adopted and uh, one which I made an honorary dragon. Right here. My honorary dragon. And Snoopy here is adopted. A little stone dragon. And Butters here is also adopted from uh, Jacob's Trading. And uh, he came with adoption papers. Then I made adoption papers of sorts for Snoopy, kind of uh, using his business card, basically. <laughs> And we made an adoption scroll for Bitey there. So yeah, oh, all kinds of dragons around. That was the littlest hobo theme if you're unfamiliar. Don't mind me, I'm kind of having a chat with the pool in the same suga miyaki vowa whoopty up there. Ah, vowa whoopty somewhere near there. Sorry! Tried to go for the full name. <laughs> it's quite complicated, I assure you. You pull in the same suga miyaki vowa whoopty somewhere near there. And somehow I stopped in the middle because the sentence was like, it gotta keep on going. There's a notification sound. Okay. It's open to literally the only thing that I need to look at. Which is fine and good. My cell phone. Oh, I hate being busy. Seriously, I was born in the wrong era. I should be living in an era without social media. Just, just the ability to pour all of my time into my art, never mind. Okay, I see a sad person online, I've got to go and like chat with them and... Okay, you're like someone that I'm trying to get closer to, let's send you a message and... Oh, I haven't talked to you in a long time. Okay, we'll send you a message. And okay, you're messaging me back now. And, you know, then 20 minutes later... Okay, 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 I can put my cell phone... Okay, let's pick up the cell phone again. That that could be an important to don't want to ignore... I grew up in the wrong era, I tells ya. 
I should not be in the era of technology. You know, I could just put it away and everything, but my business, thingies and stuff, that's that's pretty online, and as is with uh, more or less everything that I do. Like, I keep all of, more or less a documentation of everything that I've ever made on uh, Zebeth, uh, zebeth.shinesparkers.net. It's being hosted there for the time being. I'm gonna see if I can get a domain name later. I used to have a domain name way back in the day. And then that crazy lost period of my life happened and I uh, wiped out uh, literally every account that I ever owned online. So, you know, you do what you gotta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got to add that song to my repertoire. My throat singing discography, a cover song of The Littlest Hobo. And I don't think it's actually called it, that's just the show that it was the uh, kind of intro song for. It's a song by Terry Bush, and I can't right offhand remember the name of it. Come Along or something like that? I think it might be Come Along. <laughs> oh goodness, for my life to slow down seriously. Just to have no outside contact with anyone. Just to be a hermit, honestly. Honestly, I think my life, I'm meant to be a hermit somehow or another. Never mind me trying to push myself to become more extroverted or whatever, which I'm kind of trying to do. Uh, if anything, I need to bottle up even deeper. <laughs> just go into my little den over here and, and just create. And then after about 500 hours of labor, then I'll be done creating for a while. About 500 hours, that's what I need to kind of catch up to my art. See, we got a 200 project or a 200 hour project there. That one right there is probably about 50. 50? Now that's a little bit long. 20? Could be 20 hours, that one. 15, 20 hours. These ones, these are three, and I want to make at least 20 dragons before I open my booth again, which means I need 16 more dragons. And this one and the next one are already pre-accounted for, so I have to tell you just kind of on the... Okay, these, these last two are different. These last two are uh, art trades. I'm uh, trading a dragon for a piece of art that someone else is doing. So that's a little bit different than a commission. Because a commission is where, you know, they uh, just pay you and they're like, Hey, I want this color and this color and this color. And honestly, that sucks the creativity right out of it. It's like, okay, I am making a dragon and, you know, you're going to have a name, you're going to have a backstory, you're going to have adoption scroll and all that fun stuff, but... It takes away from my, my creativity. It's like, okay, I'm grabbing these scales and these rings and that's all there is to it. <laughs> like I have a dragon book with over a hundred dragons in it, all of them just waiting to be created. Oh, I need to make my bearded dragon sometime soon. Once I get around to making my next order from the Ring Lord, I need to order the finest possible Probably a black uh, thin chain that I can just you know, you know one-on-one -on -one chain and I'm gonna have uh, several strands of that coming from its chin From its chin Like all around the edge that'll make an awesome bearded dragon, so I cannot wait for that Mm-hmm. 
singing a cover song is actually a little, a little bit difficult because, you know, I'm only one instrument and typically I'm trying to like, uh, you know, voice, not voice over, but, uh, you know, do a cover of the vocals. And then I also need the kind of background uh, guitar or whatever sound as well. So I'm essentially trying to uh, make my voice become two instruments. So it's really quite difficult. Like, uh, for example, <laughs> Like, those are words in the song. Uh, something, something keeps on calling me. Down the road is where I'll always be. Every step I take, I make a new friend. Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again. Maybe tomorrow I'm gonna settle down. Mm -hmm. Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on. And that uh, one part where there wasn't words, like that's a different background, uh, like music there, and you know it just sounds weird with that missing. Yeah, uh, let's see, let's try it, let's try it. Like there was a big gap there. That that doesn't sound great from a cover perspective. And I don't know how to play any musical instruments. I unfortunately didn't grow up in a school that had band, so you know, literally didn't get the option to learn an instrument. <laughs> I did take choir though, which I'm sure is helping me a little bit right now. I did enjoy choir back in the day. Honestly, I didn't really all that too crazy much. I liked some of it, but uh, you know, I wasn't really into it, into it type of thing. Like, I was never the drama band person. Honestly, I was one of the outcast groups, or one of the uh, people in the outcast group. Three of us that were basically more or less uh, made fun of or picked on by the rest of the, you know, the meansies of the class. The ones who didn't really have any other friends except just us three. And, yeah, that was us. I actually called both of them, uh, my fellow outcasts there in the past few days. Because, you know, we uh, haven't seen each other for probably at least 15 years now. <clears throat> uh, one of them is uh, still in the army and is living in Ontario now. Another one is in Winnipeg, the city that I uh, just moved from. And I haven't seen uh, him in about 10 years or so. You know, just drifted away and such over the years. After we moved out of Landmark, or pretty much it was just high school, because we never even really phoned each other um, uh, just growing up as a whole. just We were never phone people, or at least I was never a phone person. And uh, yeah, so I still keep in uh, touch with them online a little bit, which is awesome. Uh, one of them is getting a uh, liver transplant at some point or another in the future, but is uh, just uh, going for as long as they can on their current liver, which is all kinds of awesome. Like, there was some... Uh, I can't recall what they said. I probably shouldn't be talking about it, but I'm keeping it all anonymous and stuff, so at least there's that. But yeah, some uh, just sudden medical problem came up, and it damaged their liver. So, you know, uh, it sucks. I thought about, uh, like, donating a part of my liver to help them, but that would absolutely tank my entire career and uh, everything that I've been working for for years right now. So I've been really, really struggling with that decision. Because it's like, okay, I can give you a part of my liver, but then, okay, um, well, back before it was like, hey, I have to quit college. Or now I have to, like, quit, uh, like, being a healthcare aide for 
you know, X months, six months or something like that, that it'll take me to recover from that. And I wasn't even sure if I was a match or anything like that, but my deities were also saying, okay, you, you shouldn't, like, you'll love him and stuff, but don't destroy your life, essentially. But uh, when I last talked to him, uh, everything was all fine and good. Apparently liver transplants are uh, significantly easier to come by than, say, like, uh, hearts or kidneys. Because, you know, you only need uh, part of a uh, liver for it to, like, work. I'm, I'm assuming it has to do with that. But in either case, uh, he wasn't too worried at all. He said that, more or less, eh, any time he wants to uh, fly out to, not Montreal, but Toronto. Any time he wants to fly out to Toronto, they can uh, hook him up with a new liver and that's all fine and good. But he's like, I'm not doing that just yet. I'm going to see how long I can, you know, go on this one. So it's like, okay, I'm not worried about you anymore. I don't have to, like, tank my career in order to, like, help you type of thing. So that was a big weight off of my shoulders. So that's been on my mind for years. About a year now since I heard about his, uh, like, medical thing there. It's like, I, I should donate a piece of my liver, but that'll destroy literally everything that I'm doing in my life right now. And I couldn't do it. Like, I was at too pivotal of a point in my life. And now I'm off in another town anyway. The Paw, if you haven't heard. I'm gonna prattle on about my life for a while today. Oh, this is going to be a life-building uh, dragon, apparently. The Dragon of Life? Honestly, I don't have a Dragon of Life yet. There is a chance that this could be that. Because the person that this is going to is uh, very spiritual. Uh, she's a Reiki healer. And uh, she uh, does the... Or at least helps with the Divine Sisterhood meetings in the Paw. Like kind of a meditation uh, yoga type group. And so that's going to be amazing when I get this to her. Like I said, it's an art trade. So she's going to be trading me a smudging wand for this. And... My smudge supplies are off in the back there, if you can see right about where my fingers are touching right now. Kind of, yeah, that whitish thing over there. That's my smudge stick that I got from them. I did use that once, and I do want to start using it more often. And honestly, in my future, I absolutely do see me using it more often, possibly even every single morning. Just uh, quickly smudging myself and giving myself, you know, a uh, spiritual affirmation of, I'm doing good today. Thank you, spirits, for everything. I love you all. Keep me safe. Keep me happy. Keep me precious. And uh, have a wonderful day yourself. I like to wish that on my spirits too. Like, hey, this isn't all about me. Like, I'm asking something of you. I should at least throw you a thanks or like ask how your day has been and stuff. And I do that fairly often with all of my deities. Like uh, with my last spirit, it was, uh, or the spirit that I spoke with in general. I'm a uh, Mother Earth. Um, uh, she was, uh, it was a uh, nighttime where she was. And she was kind of in an area that had lots of beetles in it, or surrounded by beetles. So I uh, told her to pet one for me. So she did. And, you know, she basically just sat down, picked one up, and I could kind of see it spiritually with my eyes closed type of thing. And yeah, she was petting it, and it was uh, biting her uh, too. Biting her a little bit too. And, uh, talking to her right now. She's saying that it didn't hurt too much. But, uh, you know, she was petting it for me. It's like, oh, thank you! That was so cute. She pet a beetle for me. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't sleep, actually, or has the kind of option not to, which is apparently common from what I've asked or heard from more or less all my deities. How about you, Apool? Okay, Apool is capable of staying awake all the time. I wonder if that is kind of a, just a spiritual thing or if... I'll have to poke around. I only know four deities. I know that God's up all times of the day and night. Yeah, God's kind of an omnipotent. He sleeps, but he's also awake because, you know, he's everywhere and nowhere at once type of thing. And, you know, he's the all-powerful one. So, you know, he's he's got the, uh, not the rule book. What am I looking for there? Yeah, let's just go with that. I'm trying to think in, like, D&D &D terms. Uh, not the code book. The source guide? The source code. He's got the, he's the source code anyway. <laughs> in the source code. I like to ponder it kind of quantum mechanically. Like, uh, when you get right down to it, it could almost be argued that uh, all of human life, all of just nature and physical objects, is essentially just numbers. Like, uh, when you get down to the gluons and uh, quarks and all that, and uh, just uh, subatomic particles, uh, they're going to have certain spins and such to them, like, okay, you're going... Uh, 
up or down or left or right or I can't remember how many different types of uh, spins a quirk. Let's just go with that one. Uh, has I used to or I had looked that up at one point, but kind of disappeared from my mind in the past while. I was looking up quantum computing one day, and it was like, okay, so you're not base uh, two anymore, because uh, with a regular computer, it's just the electricity on and off inside of the circuits, so it's base two, either on or off. But with quantum computing, you're using uh, quantum elements to that, which have more than just on and off. They have spins, and it's uh, based on the spin there. So, yeah, I'd have to see, I really need to look into this again, but, uh, you know, it's not base 2, it's going to be base uh, 3 or 4 or 5. And uh, just imagine how, just imagine how much more efficient that would make a computer. Like, say for a computer, the number 8 is going to be something like 11010010. I'm almost 100% certain that's not it, because I just guessed. But you get the idea, it takes uh, 8 1s and zeros in order to just make the number 8. And, uh, you know, for every uh, function after that, like a plus sign or whatever, that's going to take another whole pile of ones and zeros. So, now if you have base 3, for example, then an 8 could just be like 0, 1, 2. Because, you know, you have just so many more options to work with when you have uh, more than just a 1 and a 0. And then every single possible calculation from the, like, smallest number and every, like, function after that is shrunk. So it like literally exponentially speeds up a computer right from the most base level. So compu quantum computers, once they get uh, successful enough and big enough and everything, like, you know, today's modern supercomputers, but that quantum, it's just going to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, uh, AI is going to just skyrocket. And we're going to be living in an absolutely digital age where uh, artificial minds, I hope, take over a significant or more or less all of, like, all governmental functions. Like, you know, the mass, mass corruption at the top of the pyramids, the uh, presidents and uh, the cabinets and all that, that's obviously all collusion and corruption and, hey, big business, we're going to buddy up with you and then we're going to let this uh, oil thing go by and stuff like that. Like, that's obviously happening. Now, with an AI, that wouldn't happen. Because it'd be like, assuming this AI is like pro-planet, like pro-survival, obviously all of the higher powers in the world, the presidents and stuff, are not pro-survival. If they were, then they'd be like, okay, we're drilling way too much oil, and we're destroying the environment way too quickly, and we're basically just duplicating money for the sake of it. Like, we gotta reel this, like, planet in here. Or not the planet, our species. We gotta reel ourselves in here and uh, stop, you know, cutting down our forests, things like that. So just for the sheer straight out uh, survival of the planet, I really hope that AI takes over the upper levels of the government, and instead of it being all collusion, k business, 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 and then we'll say some good things to the people just to make them think that we're like doing stuff for them, and we will on rare occasion, but really it's business. Then the AI would uh, hopefully be more like, okay. Numbers. You have this much money, government. That's all there is to it. You can't print anymore. You're not allowed to. You were in debt. <laughs> oh, that's the thing about the uh, lowercase and the uppercase, hey? With us, debt is basically a death sentence. With the uppercase, uppercase, debt is basically print more money. <laughs> But won't that uh, increase inflation and make everything more expensive and then people are going to have less and less of money overall to, like, survive? Print more money. <laughs> I am quite anti-establishment, as you can tell. Way too much corruption. Oh, may as well bring up kind of a... I don't I think it's probably a controversial point, but uh, it isn't in my mind. Overpopulation. Like, there's 7 billion, or 7 billion of us on uh, Earth right now. The Earth cannot survive, like, infinite, like, growth. We're pushing other animals out, we're making them extinct. And we're a parasite. Humans are literally a parasite because we have no natural predators, and we just infinitely multiply. So, 
I am just praying and waiting for the day, might be AI, when a government steps up and says, hey, we can't sustain this. Unlimited growth or population growth can not be done. And they, they have to do something. Okay, there is a one-child policy, and that's all there is to it. For the next 200 years, every family can only have one child, because we need to get this down to, like, say, 4 billion people, and we'll keep the world's population hovering at that, and if you have an extra child, sorry, we can't allow that. There's too damn many of us. <laughs> like, honestly, 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 there is too many humans. <laughs> So I wish a government would step up and take that issue. Because do you ever, have you ever heard the word overpopulation in any government speech ever? Like, I haven't listened to them all, but I'm doubting it. Because that would be unbelievably unpopular and all they care, or care about is the vote. Which they buy anyway. <laughs> oh, the voting machines are all rigged in the US. Seriously, if you're living in a country that's not the US and you have a paper voting system, Okay, that can still be messed with pretty easily, but uh, it's at least, you know, less mess withable than the uh, computer systems in the government, or in the US, sorry, where I've seen a documentary on this, like, essentially the uh, voting machines can be pre-programmed to basically spit out whatever number they want. This person won by 3,000 votes. Done. Doesn't matter what the actual votes are. Nothing is, like, saved and recorded. I suppose I would have to be able to put a print printout or something, but can't recall. The documentary made it look like just stupidly easy to affect the votes. And that's been a big giant issue in the past. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't come up in, uh, like, well, the last election where Trump won, of all people. Oh, that was a horrible-ass uh, election, everything there. Hillary Clinton, which is, well, also corrupt as all fuck. And Trump, who's corrupt as all fuck. And then Bernie Sanders, the independent that's like, hey, I'm pro-people and I'm all awesome and stuff, and uh, government is all corrupt, and yeah, I'm on your side, people. And so all the young voters were like, yeah, you're finally calling out all this shit. And then he was like, okay, I'm going to side with uh, Hillary Clinton. It's like, really? You became one of the major parties? Honestly, really, really for serious? You're throwing away your ideals? And so he literally vanished from the news at that point. Which sucks, because I'm sure he was still doing stuff in the background, but... I don't know if he anticipated just the absolute lack of coverage he would receive after that. Because he did not appear in any, like, news feed or anything after that for a long time. A lot of people talk about him and the stuff that he's doing right now if you go to, like, this specific uh, Bernie Sanders-related uh, Facebook groups and things like that. Or like, Millennials for Revolution, Bernie Sanders stuff appears in there fairly often. Seriously, we need a revolution. Ugh. Politics, eh? Should be run by AI. Government, all, all you really need to do is just stop printing more money. You don't have enough? <laughs> Better fucking make the military smaller than now, shouldn't you? There's your trillions of bucks. <laughs> But then someone will attack us. Well, I guess you shouldn't be fucking with your economy so bad. Besides, we're not even in an age where, uh, like, one country is going to, like, throw a million people at another country and be all, okay, now, just, like, murder the other army such to the point that, like, all of their dead corpses stacked on the, uh, battlefield, you know, basically need to be scraped into a giant ditch, and, uh, then we take over that land. Like, that age is long, long gone. Age of technology and stuff, everything is too spreadable and uh, knowable. Although Russia did pull some of that shit recently here. Just uh, with uh, Crimea, 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 uh, that area that I think used to belong to the Ukraine. And then a few years ago, uh, like basically kind of non-military soldiers, but uh, unidentifiable soldiers that weren't wearing like, you know, a specific emblem or anything, kind of marched in took Crimea, and then Russia was like, this is ours now. And it kind of came in a certain political area where people didn't really, really want to fuck with Russia all that much. So uh, Russia just got away with taking Crimea. And kind of a weird props to that, like, 
All right, that was some uh, crazy ass shit you did. From what I've seen or read online and, you know, uh, mass media news, like, pfft, how accurate is that? But it seems like the, uh, from that, the people that live there were uh, happy with the decision. Don't know how accurate that is. But, uh, yeah. honestly, uh, every so often when something crazy like that uh, happens, I like to go onto Twitter and uh, basically see what the people on there are talking about. Like, you know, the Twitter uh, main algorithm feeds, they don't show you rights. They don't show you the bad things happening in the world. Like, those are the big businesses that are, uh, well, run the government or run by the government. It's massive collusion. So you can't expect to get actual news about, like, uh, people uprising against the governments and stuff from Twitter just directly. You have to actually search for hashtag Greece riots or hashtag France riots and things like that. So that's kind of annoying, but uh, every so often I uh, do do that. Like, if I hear of uh, riots happening somewhere, I'll check the Twitter feed of, uh, okay, so what kind of riots do we have happening right now? And are you, like you know, throwing, like, Molotovs at the police or something like that? Or are you just, like, storming government buildings? Or are you just, like, you know, peacefully sitting around said government? Like, what you up to? So I do like to look into that every so often. Haven't in the past while. Been way too busy, honestly. Absorbed in either my artwork or, like, day work or cleaning. Good as you should see my apartment right now. I put more or less everything that I, like that was scattered in the living room, away into uh, two uh, kind of storage boxes that the camera is currently sitting on top of. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically just made it so that uh, like all the floor is clean. It's not right, right, right at this second because I was doing like a hundred things on the computer prior to making this dragon, but this dragon's got to be made so I was like, ugh. <laughs> Everything onto the floor. I will pick you all up later. You were disorganized mess of like scrap papers with okay I need to buy this. I need to go do this. I need to do the my, my to-do list And I dropped a ring Okay, well that'll turn up later So yeah, there's a handful of scrap papers lying around me right now But otherwise my place is pretty much clean my bedroom leaves something to be desired cleanliness but uh, a lot of that is just cardboard boxes that I need to migrate into these storage boxes over here. And then I could uh, st really stand to give the place a solid vacuuming, because that hasn't happened since I've moved in. So I really should. Oh, goodness, artists. Just uh, housework? You really honestly want me to spend an hour on housework? Who has an hour to spare? Seriously, I tried watching a movie the other day, Everest. I got 20 minutes into it before I already had like another four tabs open and like was off in another world like, hey, this has to be done, this has to be done, this has to be done, this has to be done. And right now I still have to go back to my Twitch page and uh, do some editing there, make a post of some sort of, hey, I uh, can't live stream from where I live, too slow internet, be back when I can. I'll keep on hosting people for a while. I'd upload my, uh, like, the dragon making videos like this to, uh, Twitch as well. I honestly should, but it takes about two days to upload any video to any site online. Like, to upload, uh, one of these to YouTube, or this once I'm done with it, to YouTube, it's gonna have to be, uh, uploading for about two days solid. Like, without turning the computer off, nothing. So that's an unbelievable nuisance. I get 0.2 megs per second upload speed. I'm going to try to call my internet provider, MTS, in a little while and basically be like, hey, is there anything you can do about this? I know there's not anything they're going to be able to do about this, but at least, you know, waste their time and make them come out and at least look. Like, okay, you can put like a uh, line checker, I think that's the term for it, uh, over here, and uh, you can see that it's absolute crap. Is there anything you can do about that? Is there... Yeah, any devices that you can attach that will increase the signal, something. Because I'm supposed to be getting, like, I want to say 3 megs upload speed, and I'm getting 0 0.2. Cause, and they just said because of the copper wiring in the building. Fuck that shit. I have lived in other places with copper wiring, and it was 10 times faster than this. So I've got to call them out on that bullshit. 
And honestly, I have no faith in, like, small towns and, like, the old wiring and stuff here for, like, you know, upgrading technologically. So I have essentially no faith in uh, MTS actually fixing the issue, but I'm going to try anyway because it's either that or just, you know, let them win. <laughs> Which is also a bit tempting because calling them takes time. Okay, now i got to sit on hold with their tech support for, like, an hour before I actually get to a representative. Okay, now I've got to explain the issue to you. And now we have to go through all of the stupid tests that I've already done, because I've worked in tech support in the past too. So, okay, we're going to reboot my computer. We'll do the speed test. It's point 0.2. Okay. And do you have anything loading with startup? Yes. Okay, we'll disable those. And we'll reboot. And then we'll see what your speed is. Okay. And now we're going to power cycle the router. Okay, I'll unplug it. We'll wait for 20 seconds. Do 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 do. Okay, we'll plug it back in, and now we're going to reboot the computer, <laughs> and we're going to open up the website, and it's still 0.2 megs per second, okay. We're going to send a technician out on this date, and you need to be home between 8 and 4, because, you know, you can't, like, actually give me a fucking timeline, or, like, you're third in line for people to visit or something like that. No, 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 I can't go out and do grocery shopping or chores or anything like that. I have to keep my bitch ass inside all goddamn day for eight fucking hours in the hopes that they show up. <laughs> like, internet support. Holy fuck, Canada, you are doing it wrong. Like, other countries I've heard pay, like, a quarter the amount for internet. They have twice as much speed. Like, Canada, holy fuck are you doing awful. Heard the US is basically just as bad. And you know, the usual, uh, the reason that they uh, spit out for that is, oh, but it's a really, really, really big country and things are really, really, really far away from each other and then we'd have to run lo- You have billions of fucking dollars! Run that fiber opt optic fucking cable the 200 miles that you need to get to that town! Like, holy fuck, you have billions. Spend it! Oh, just... Sorry, getting a bit incensed there. Big business and... Unfathomable corruption. If there's that dark spot inside of me, like, we all have that dark, angry spot inside of us. That deep, black evil inside of me. That is 100% directed towards corruption in money. Financial corruption. That is exactly what all of my blackness is directed towards. <laughs> I could prattle on about that for a minute. I've kind of like uh, visualized that darkness inside of me. And uh, like it started out as just kind of a black blob of anger. And then I kind of, you know, mentally in my uh, third eye forged it. But, you know, essentially you bash down on that evil black spot for a long time. And I forged it into a machete. And that machete is my uh, point. My, uh, yeah, essentially my focal point, which is corruption regarding the economy. Which isn't a person, it isn't like a government entity, it isn't a specific business, it's just generally corruption. Because that really is where all of the evil in the world is. We've got warlords in various third world countries and probably first world countries too. Is there such a thing as a second world country? Who, you know, basically let just let the, uh, like, country folk die and starve and... You know, there's blights and there's, uh, plagues? Do plagues still? I guess plagues still happen. And, uh, droughts. That's the word I was looking for. And, okay, well, we could give you, like, uh, government aid and, like, you know, buy food from other countries and ship it in and then ship it to... Th no, no, they're, they're fine with just letting their townsfolk die because then the, uh, warlords at the top get more money. <laughs> like, that type of shit is happening in the world. And that type of shit is what needs to be replaced by AI. Just absolute lack of emotion. That's what's needed at the top of the pyramids right now, is zero emotion. Because you know what emotion is at the top of the pyramids right now? Greed. Greed and collusion. Is that an emotion? Greed is at the top of the pyramids and that needs to be gone. Like, love... Okay, you know, it's wonderful to think that. Like, we got the Dalai Lama, who is the uh, head of uh, the Buddhist faith. I can't remember which specific Buddhist faith, but... Yeah, so the Dalai Lama is absolutely wonderful. He should be running the world if anyone should. And, uh, yeah. There's no love at the top of the pyramids. I honestly don't believe there ever will be love at the top of the pyramids, at least not in my lifetime. 
So the next best thing is absolute lack of emotion. Because the only emotion that's there is anti-populace. So zero emotion is far better than that. <laughs> oh, and we're just about done the body. Life, hey? Just about got us a dragon caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Wow, I prattled for a while there. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. I can't remember the name of that song. I don't know if I've given that one a name. I think it might be in my repertoire. Coming home? Something coming home? Could be. In other case, we've got a dragon caterpillar. Woo! Ah, check it out, dragons! Meet the dragon pack. Okay, now we need to work on your tail, which means we need either Jill or Albert, whoever I grab first. It would appear to be orange. I think you're Albert. You are Albert. Okay, we are going to borrow your tail here. Or your part of a tail. Where is your part of a tail? Jill! Jill, did you steal his tail? Yes! <laughs> okay. They both kind of have identical uh, tail pieces. So we're just going to take this one and pop it over here. There you go. Oh, that must feel better, hey? Okay, so now we're going to attach two silver rings here. Because uh, on my little sample piece, it's like a uh, silver and then a few black rings, because I normally make uh, silver dragons. And uh, yeah, we put on a few silver rings there, then I'll know where to uh, separate off uh, these rings from those rings. You know, those ones are going to be slightly more uh, worn than these ones. These ones are like untouched rings, so ooh, they're all pretty and shiny and stuff. Technically, they're more matte than shiny. They get shiny. <laughs> but we're going to put two silver rings on here just to make it easy on me. No, oh, it's an extra 30 seconds of time. Ah, to be an artist full time, hey? So that I don't have to worry about those extra 20 seconds. It's like, okay, I'm trying to squeeze this in before work today. And I don't like that. <laughs> and just to put it simply, I don't like that. Actually, we're going to put a third silver ring in there. We're just going to try something since I more or less duplicate this. Like I'm duplicating the way that it uh, is with the black rings, but with silver rings. Because that works really, really nicely for the uh, silver dragons. So if I use three rings here, that'll work really good for the black dragons. Black dragon. Black dragon, you're being born right now. Black dragon, oh black dragon, the dragon of life somehow. You're gonna be wonderful, full of vibrant life. And hearts and love here, this dragon's full of life. We have a wonderful dragon being born right now. And Albert here is helping. You become the dragon somehow. Oh, but rhymes with how. <laughs> dragon, dragon, dragon. Being born today. We will see what we can do to make this dragon hay. And it's not like I can finish this after work, so I'm really hoping that I can uh, finish this before work. 
because I work tomorrow morning and I get home at midnight tonight. So, uh, tomorrow is going to be some kind of level of hell for me because I'm going to get maybe five hours of sleep tonight. And then I'm going to wake up, do a full eight hours of work. And then I've got uh, uh, my very first karate cl class after that. So I've got to uh, do karate afterwards. And I hope that I'm going to have the energy for that after eight hours of work and five hours of sleep. So we'll see how that goes. Then I have karate tomorrow as well. I think it's tomorrow. It could be a, sp or a day off and then two days in a row. I kind of do it that way. I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, I want to say. And yeah, that'll be interesting and stuff. <laughs> and then this morning. This morning when I was lazing in bed like, okay, I'm going to dedicate the entire day to uh, chain mailing. Wouldn't you... It's exactly these moments when you're dedicating your entire time when that person that hasn't messaged you in six months, they are picking that exact morning to message you. And kind of like, hey, do you want a video chat? Well, I haven't fucking talked with you in six months. Of course I am. Goodbye time. <laughs> like, life seems to love being like that. Just, okay, what's the worst possible timing that you could receive for this event to happen? That's when it's happening. <laughs> You know, it's a minor setback. I'm really hoping to finish this dragon before work. So we'll see how that goes, because there's no way I'm calling in sick, because I'm not that type of person. But I really want to do this in one sitting. So if I don't have makeup on for work, then uh, I don't have makeup on for work. And I am basically going to be going as full throttle as I can on this. Uh, the last dragon that I made to start to finish was uh, three hours long. I started it just before 11, so 11, 12, 1, 2, that takes me to 2 o'clock, and I need to be at work, or at least uh, physically leaving home for work, at 3. So that gives me very, very little uh, sway time there, and I hate having no sway time. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. Like the people that have like 300 things on the go and you need to be at this place at 4.30 and then this place at 5.30 and at 5.45 I gotta stop and drop this thing off here and then at 6.40... No! How? I, I am not that type of person. I'm like, okay, I have a full like 16 hour day. I can do two events here. <laughs> this one, you know, it's... For me to want to do it comfortably and happily, I'm going to need like a half an hour lead up time where I'm like, you know, setting up my equipment or, you know, getting me a drink of tea beforehand and things like that. I, I can't stand rushing from one thing to another. Here I am trying to take a 1.0 position at work, which uh, like a, right now I technically work four or four days a week and I'm trying to like uh, get it towards five days a week. And I honestly don't know if I want that, because that just gives me less and less time to work. Like, at least right now with the eight-hour shifts, I'm able to do stuff before and after work. Uh, with... Whatchamacallit? 12-hour shifts, which is what I'd be receiving if I did a full-time position. Yeah, I'd have more days off in between there, sort of. They'd end up calling me in for work uh, during those times anyway. <laughs> And uh, I'd have literally zero time whatsoever after work to, like, work on my art. It would be, okay, I get up, I go to work, I get home, I sleep. And that's literally every single work day. There is, there is no option for anything other than that. Like, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Which means your alarm, at least my alarm, is going off at 6.45. So, yeah, 6.45, 7. I need to be in bed by, like, 10 o'clock at the latest type of thing. 7, 8, 9, 10, that gives you sort of 3. Okay, it's not even 7, it's 7.45 that I'd get off. So if I'm lucky, I get home at 8, 8.15. Usually it's uh, about 8.15, let's say. So that gives me under 2 hours to more or less do anything that I need to do around the house. Which could be, say, cleaning up, it could be cooking, it could be uh, laundry. 
So, yeah, 12 hour shifts, they'd be not bad. Like, they're not bad every so often, but like every single shift being a 12, I don't know if I could do that. Just the sheer lack of ability to do anything else on a work day. I wish I could get more evening shifts though to be off or to be honest. Like that go from uh what should we call it, 3 30 to midnight essentially. And that would be decent. But uh the only uh evening shift schedule thing at work I'd have to sign up for is a uh I think a point six position, which is like the equivalent of probably three days of work, like 60% of full-time, whatever that turns into. And yeah, that's, well, A, significantly less money, uh, but I'd be working all evening shifts, and there would be gaps where I'd have, like, you know, 10 days off or whatever, and then I work for five days, and then I have another 10 days off or something like that. But I also need to save up a whole ton of money, too. Like, uh, my period of loss there, I lost a lot. So I'm kind of in the process of buying back just a lot of a lot of my life losses right now. I've gotten a few paychecks at work, so it's like, okay, I can buy this again and this again and this again and this again. And you know, just unfortunately be forced to respend money when our economy is the worst that it's ever been in all of human history. So that sucks. <laughs> like in the 80s or something like that, you know, back when you know, wages weren't stagnant and, you know, people were good. When single-family homes were capable of existing and, you know, buying cars and furniture and things. Furniture. Yeah, I can buy a piece of furniture. The idea of spending like $700 on a couch? Bull fucking shit! As if that's gonna happen in the next 10 years. <laughs> But I am spending a lot of stuff on just the uh, smaller things, which to be fair is still like dropping me down a few thousand dollars because horrible economy. But I actually am able to do so because my starting wage as a healthcare aide, I'm making more money now than I ever have at any time in my past. Like even after working for seven years at a customs brokerage company, and having had my CC at the, CCS at the time, my Certified Customs uh, Certificate, I was still only making $70 an hour. Honestly, it was almost pointless to get that CCS certificate. I wish I still had it. Uh, like, you know, I would have had to have kept on paying money to it to keep it every year. Like, what the fuck kind of a diploma is that? You only get your diploma if you pay us money. Every single year, forever. What the fuck kind of shit is that? Anyways, so, uh, yeah, the... The company didn't give us a raise or anything like that. Like, they said that they would, but they didn't. They were like, okay, here's $100. Uh, thanks for having your CCS. Like, well, this is fucking nothing. One day of pay. Thanks. I, I did my education for a solid year and passed the exams, and you're giving me one day of pay without a raise. Fuck you. <laughs> Go back on your word yet. Then again, that's kind of a bit of the uh, the economy being broken. Like, we were a smaller brokerage firm, so, you know, there's overhead costs and all that type of BS. And the economy is broken. They don't have money to give uh, raises to people. They're probably barely, like, above the line anyway. Oh, the economy is so unbelievably broken. The only companies that can stick around are the big ones that, like, make most of their sales online. Because if stores are anything like I've seen in the past five years... Where's Octavia? You're my usual length checker. Oh, that's Hazel. Where was I going with that before I got distracted by dragons and dragon making? Something or another, money is corrupt. <laughs> okay. Just a little bit more, a few more rings, and then we can start tapering down and get the tip of our tail. The tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tail, the teeth, the lips. Kind of 
wish in the uh, realm of, or in the dragon world, the realm of dragons, that more people liked striped dragons. Like, it seems like most people that I uh, contact or like, deal with or, you know, that I'm trading artwork with. My trade right after this one is going to be a dragon for a dragon. It's going to be awesome. But, uh, yeah, they're, they typically all just want a solid dragon. Like, I want a green one or I want a red one or a purple one or something. Like, one a little while ago actually ended up being, uh... Let's just kind of put all these rings on here, because we're going to need them anyway. Yeah. But it's like, but striped dragons are so cool! You have so much more customizability with them. You're like, let's take a look at Josephine here. Like, she's kind of a, uh, she's a striped dragon, just like, uh, kind of irregular stripes. There we go, that camera. So yeah, it's like, uh, blue stripes kind of throughout her body there. And that looks amazing! So... I wish more people would like striped dragons. Then we've got some more subtly striped dragons here. Okay, not you, Ophelia. Hazel! Oh wait, Hazel, were you solid gray? Huh. Okay, never mind. Shade? Nope, shade is solid. It must have been Skitters. It must have been Skitters that was uh, basically a dark gray and titanium stripe. Was it you? Okay, no, no, no. It's difficult to see because uh, she's been around a long time. Okay, you can actually see it in the camera really, really nicely there. You got the blackened steel and the uh, high carbon tempered steel scales there. So it gives it a subtle striping. So she looks amazing. Wow, that turned out really good on camera. Wow. That too, in person. In person, it's kind of hard to see the stripes. But uh, on camera, yeah. Also, two moments, I apologize. Nuisance. Handkerchiefs, they're wonderful. Less waste. Seriously, I'm gonna go on about this for a few minutes. I don't care if it's kind of a disgusting sub subject, but handkerchiefs. Okay, you can use like the uh, cloth or the paper tissues, like, you know, Kleenex and whatnot, but then you're throwing away paper. You know, like, trees are being cutting down for, like, these stupid little uh, ultra-thin pieces of uh, paper, which you're then blowing your nose in, and then you're throwing away. Like, that's not going to become a tree again. That's not a seed. So it's like, okay, we'll all go through a ton of Kleenex, and honestly, I can see me getting to a point in the future where my toilet paper is replaced with a pile of, like, rags or cloths. Honestly, that's not a bad idea. Okay, yeah, paying for, uh washer dryer here is pretty expensive but uh going under the theory of like I, I can buy a whole ton of rags here that i just have essentially a basket beside the toilet of where you toss them after you uh, wipe yourself and then i take them and wash them every so often i'd really prefer to do that in my own place though where i own the washer and dryer like i'm in an apartment right now and they charge two dollars for a wash and two dollars for a dry so that's four dollars for a cycle which is really up there and uh, I can see these uh, cloths, like, making a fair amount of, like, basket of cloth quite often. And that's really expensive, whereas with the paper it's nice and thin. So, in a different era, in a different world, I would absolutely be using a cloth uh, toilet paper right now. But, that's besides the point. That's getting into a little bit more disgusting level. Handkerchiefs. Blowing your nose. Like, that's... Everyone does that. Or sneezing. Like, handkerchiefs. You use them for a while, you wash them, you can even rinse them underwater and just hang dry them, like, you know, scrub them with soap or whatever and hang dry, dry them. And that's all fine and good. And then you reuse them. And then there's no paper cut down. Although on the on a note related to uh, the toilet paper, I did know someone that uh, after they had their baby, went with uh, full cloth diapers, which is absolutely admirable. Props to you, Excelsia. You're amazing. And just seriously, the absolute lack of waste that would come with that. I mean, yeah, there's going to be more pee to clean up. There's going to be more, uh, like, BM to clean up. And that's life. Humans co or create these things. Also, a little bit of why I never really want to have children. I can see me having a cat. Oh, I absolutely see me having a cat in the future. And they go in a litter box. They come pre-trained, essentially. 
you know, unless you get them really, 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 really tiny, but yeah, I plan to go to a uh, thrift store, plan to go to a uh, pet store or a uh, adoption place. There's an adoption place in town here. I'm living in a place where I can't have pets, unfortunately, but I go to said adoption place and basically say, okay, what cat has been here the longest? And take that one home. Like, it's going to be an older cat. It's going to be with me for like, you know, five years if I get it when it's like, you know, 12 or 15 or whatever. But, you know, it's a cat that hasn't seen love for a long time. It's a cat that's basically been inside of its jail in the adoption center the longest, longer than any of the rest of them. So it's like, you. You're the one that I want to give a really good home to. And then I would. I would spoil the ever-loving heck out of that cat. It would be the happiest, most spoiled, most... There's food everywhere. I've made, like, nests for you and cat trees and scritchin' posts and you're getting all the pettings and cuddlings. Like, that's... That's what my cat's gonna get. So I absolutely need to move to a place where they accept pets. Because at my current place, they don't. You don't mind me, I'm fussing around with some wires here. Because I want to try to make more room inside of this particular slot in my chainmail kit. And to do that, you basically take a small wire, you stick it into here, and you stir it around. And that basically kind of shuffles all the rings, like, essentially vertical, so they all kind of tuck right beside each other. And now I already freed up, like, an extra centimeter of space inside of this little bin. So if any of these need to go back, then there's room for them. I honestly don't think they will be. Oh, itchies. Itchies. Don't mind the collar. As catting it up a little bit earlier. Every so often I like to put this on and basically kind of go a little bit... A little bit cat. A little bit feral. Less feral. More it was just kind of batting a uh, fur ball around my bedroom a little bit. Like, let it thwap against the walls and everything. And don't care if it knocks something down. And Yeah, you go on cat. Okay, we need to get these two shoulder scales on here. We don't have a dragon caterpillar yet! We have been working on your tail for so long, and we don't even have your shoulder scales on. Aww. And also, I would appear to have put Albert back, who currently has your tail, so we'll grab that. <laughs> so we've got a few steps to do here. Okay, we have to open up this ring, so that we can pop a scale into there. Do -do. Normally, I'm really good at getting the uh, shoulder scales in, right immediately after I begin the belly scale, or belly rings, but uh, this time I must have been prattling on about something and just jumped straight to the tail. So I am sorry, little dragon. You're not quite a caterpillar yet. Although, that said, you are going to transfer from caterpillar to minor dragon snake in a very, very short period of time. Possibly the fastest transition of all of my dragons from one stage to the next. You know, I keep track of those things, kind of. Okay, we got one shoulder scale in. One! One dragon scale! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two! Two dragon scale! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now, we must attach this scale to this ring. Now, I apologize if you just heard some humming in the background. My fridge just turned on. Okay, now these two scales kind of initially attached. They're all loosey goosey, so I need to attach them behind the very first scale. And to do that, we pop a quarter inch ring, attaching both of these shoulder scales to each other, and also through the two back rings here. My dragons have very strong backs. Come on. There you are. Then through this scale as well. Oh. Come on. It's being mildly stubborn, so I'm going to swap the opening angle of the ring here. 
so that it kind of opens the other way. Or say like normally I have the left or the right side down and the left side up. I'm reversing them so that the left side is down and the right side is up. Which I may show you one day, but I'd need like a camera right over my shoulder type of thing to really make that possible. And I really don't feel like trying to futz around with, okay, now I've got to move the microphone, I've got to stand in front of the camera. <laughs> got to look at the computer at the same time. And okay, uh, 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 way too awkward. <laughs> There we go. We have shoulder scales. Woo! We have a dragon caterpillar. Okay, now your tail, which is partially done. Whoop! Get back here, Albert. Octavia. Oop, this is shade. You can go with shade. Kind of like all my dragon tails based off the same dragon, but... You are the, uh most elderly black dragon that I have, so we'll compare to you, just because. Been around the longest, she's one of my originals. Okay, we got a good length here, thank you, Shade. Yeah, oh. Yeah, my older dragons. Oh, one of my originals. One of the most awesome dragons. She's the dragon of, uh, meditation? I can't 100% recall. This uh, shade here, uh, he's one of the dragons that are just... Like when I was first making the adoption scrolls, they weren't the dragon of X. They were uh, just, this dragon loves to skitter around and stuff like that. And this dragon loved to uh, curl up in a ball and uh, relax and stuff like that. So once uh, I started coming up with the idea of, okay, you're the dragon of contemplation, you're the dragon of speech, you're the dragon of documentation, you're the dragon of happiness. And I was like, okay, all of my first few dragons, you don't have a dragon of X yet, so, you know, I had to put that in for them. My very, very, very first dragon, uh, Sabrina, or not my very, 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 very first dragon, but my very, 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 very first adoptable dragon, uh, Sabrina, uh, she was uh, just a... Uh, uh, yeah, her adoption scroll more or less just gave her uh, ring sizes, and said that she's a playful trickster. And something along those lines. I think it was, yeah, just playful trickster. And uh, her photo was taken on top of a sewing machine. This sewing machine, actually. The sewing desk that I'm working on. Like, the sewing machine folds into it. So her photo was taken on that. And uh, she ended up becoming the uh, dragon of sewing. Loves to make things. Uh, loves to yeah, make pillows and uh, other knitted or uh, woven stuff for friends. Sewn stuff. Okay, I dropped another ring, which ideally I'd prefer not to lose because I clipped that one down in size. Uh, oh, there's a ring. Is that the ring from before or is that the ring from now? That's the ring from before. Okay, well, we're going to clip you too because I need five of you. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're going to have one more extra ring that's clipped down. But I kind of have a little bin that I put the kind of, uh, well, shoot. I've got a bin that I put the odd-sized rings into. And I do still have some of those left, so I actually didn't need to clip down any of these. <laughs> Whoops. Well, there appears to be a whole ton of pre-closed uh, quarter-inch rings here. Like, as opposed to specifically clipped down ones. So let's kind of gather all of the just pre-closed ones to this side, because we're going to need that for the dragon head. Okay, you three. You, oh, no, wait. What about you? You're full size. You? You're full size. You, you're clipped down. And so are you. What about you two? Are you full sized or are you small? I'm just going to close a uh, brand new ring and kind of compare it beside these. Because I'm kind of worried that all of these were clipped down, maybe. Nope, nope, all of you are definitely a quarter inch. Okay, so we had one pre-clipped down ring. Oh, let's freshen you out. You're going to go in the dragon and one of the other ones are going out. Because <laughs> right towards the tip of the tail here, I need 732 inch rings, which doesn't exist in black and steel. Like, I'd have to make a essentially $2,000 order 
to order 50 pounds of that one size or 20 pounds or whatever of that one size for them to essentially warrant them to like blacken all those rings which sucks because you know I don't want two thousand dollars worth of rings I'm vaguely contemplating it though I'm honestly vaguely contemplating it because I can see me making dragons easily for the next 20 years like more or less the rest of my life being a dragon mother being the one on like in the world who makes chainmail dragons more or less exclusively like there's other people who make chainmail dragons and stuff but uh, honestly I don't think there's anyone that's uh, like made 60 of them so far and that's what I'm up to right now so a bit of a breaking right there yay this one clipped kind of crooked and is making a uh, bad seam so let's just file that side down a little bit there we go that's decent Okay, now let's pop on a few 732 inch rings to taper my tail down. The taper, the tail, the teeth, the lips, the taper, the tail, the teeth, the lips. <laughs> oh, I can't wait until I can live stream again. When I move to my next city, live stream is going to be one of the very first things that I get going there. Then also uh, opening up my booth at craft shows and events like that. Everything. Did I put these two rings on incorrectly? Mm-hmm. 
This tail slowed me down a little bit. to go down to the uh, three sixteenths inch rings. Oh, not quite. There we are. Duk, 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 duk. Beautiful. Okay, now I need to open up a handful of three sixteenths inch rings. How long are we sitting at here? Hour 20. Okay, about halfway done my dragon making time. I've done the body and the tail. Might be in a, th a three and a half hour dragon, we'll see. Might be a three and a half hour dragon yet. See, we're gonna need some pre-closed three sixteenths. Just a few of you. Okay. Let's see if this is enough. Okay, flatten, flatten, flatten. Make sure all the rings are angled the right way. Okay, now we need you right there. Okay, now we double you. Nope. And we attach you to two more rings. Now we get into the short double chain section of the dragon. Just a two on two chain type of thing. So we've got a three or length of three doubled rings. Then we have two singled rings. Then we have one 532 inch ring. And that's what makes the tip of a dragon tail. Do 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 do
do do do do do do do do Oops, this ring over here is supposed to be doubled. There we go. Now we need just a few more 3 16 inch rings for the tail. Okay, so we got one singled, two singled. I need to clip one of you down for 5 32 inch rings. Because again, black and 5 32 inch rings don't exist either. It'd be nice if they did. Okay, now we need two tiny red scales. Whoop! One. Oh, come back here, you. I almost wish I could make the tip of the dragon's tail, you know, black and red, or like like some variation instead of just double red. But the dragon's calling to me. She's saying that she wants it to be double red. So, who am I to argue with the dragon? Okay, do we want it to be a forked uh, tip of the tail scales or cupped tip of the tail scales? You're telling me you want it forked. You're very rambunctious. Although, for the dragon of life, you certainly are a rambunctious one. Or you're going to be a rambunctious one. Okay, we've got a pile of pre-closed rings, a pile of pre-opened rings that will uh, help us make the head here in a few minutes. And now, now our little dragon, we get to disassemble this part of the tail from Albert and attach it to you. Woo! The trading of the tails. Sort of like what I'm doing with you, trading my tail. Feel free to uh, post in the comments if you have a tale to tell me, by the way. I'd love to hear your tale, either about dragons or just life in general. Tell me a story about yourself. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Albert, thank you so much for your services. You were wonderful. And what was going on over here? Ooh. Okay, having that uh, one centering silvered like we did before didn't work out quite the way that I uh, had hoped it would, so we're going to scrap that theory in the future. And in the meantime, it's all fine and good. Okay, you're slanting upwards from this angle right here. You, what way does your tail go? It slants upwards towards me. This is downwards. We need to flip you upside down. So now you are upwards towards me. So now you can just go attach right into here. Click, click. And we'll close you in. Woo! You've got half your tail. Well, it's already got all your tail, but it's half attached. Or rather a third attached if you want to be specific. There's three rings that you have to attach in order to get the tail connected to the body. And we've done two. Okay, and number three. Ch -ch 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 
There we go, kind of uh, continue the interwoven four in one and blend it nicely into the elf weave. Woo! See, I told ya. From the like shortest time possible between dragon kill caterpillar and minor dragon snake. Now, let's make you a head. Oh, if only I had a red rings, that would be amazing. Or copper rings. I could see this being a copper eyed dragon. I do have a red pipe cleaner, and as tempting as it is to make a pipe cleaner fuzzy eyes. Mental note, not this dragon, but one day we're going to have a fuzzy dragon. And that's going to be awesome. And it looks like my dragons have kind of uh, gone beyond, uh, or at least the body of the dragon has gone beyond needing work holder rings. That's kind of relegated to the head and eyes. Like these uh, larger aluminum rings that I just used to kind of, you know, hold the like piece as I'm working on it. Uh, the dragon body seems generally large enough that it doesn't need one of those. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> Speaking of, let's get some of these work holders out. Oh goodness, one of them broke the other day. Like, because, you know, you're just opening and closing them over and over and over and over again to work with your, like, pieces here. So yeah, one of them just got overworked in that way and snapped, you know, at the base of it, the, where it always bends. So I need to buy more of them. I only have one, two, three, four, five of these rings here. I got them in a bag of uh, floor sweepings from the Ring Lord, which is basically just kind of their random rings that fell onto the floor during the manufacturing process. So it's random sizes and colors and types of metal and everything. And I got a few nice aluminum ones out of there. And I'm mildly tempted to get another thing of floor sweepings. I don't know if I want to deal with that. I haven't done much with this pile of floor sweepings. Maybe I'm just kind of... I plucked all the good sizes out of it, so to speak. But I do still keep it around for just, hey, maybe I'll come up with something that needs a random ring. Hasn't been used in a long time, the floor sweepings kind of pocket there. Okay, and unlike my last dragon, which was a two-headed dragon, this one's thankfully only one. <laughs> so they're going to take half as long to make. Honestly, my two-headed dragon, I think I worked for two straight hours on the heads alone. Probably a lot longer than that, actually, because uh, one head takes... One, two, three, four, five, six... One head takes about uh, one hour to make. And two heads are going to make take two hours to make. But then uh, finagling them onto the body, that took just ages. Like, I don't know why, but... Wow, this batch of uh, blackened steel rings is really, really nice. Like, the blackening process seems to warp the rings somewhat. And these seem very, very clean. Like, oh my goodness. I've been having to make very few changes to it, and I am not complaining. Okay, there we go. And the head is made out of a weave known as Alien Mail, which is essentially two strips of European 4-in-1. Here's one of them. Um, a sandwich together and connected along the sides. So we're going to be doing exactly that. Do, 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 do. I'm kind of curious right now. I'm pondering it. To make a dragon with a black body and a silver head. And I kind of like the uniqueness of that. But you think that someone would call me on racism or some shit like that? Like, OMG, you gave it, like, white face. I don't know. <laughs> like, that vaguely worries me. I'm working with black dragons and, well, silver dragons, white dragons. And, like, there's no significance to it whatsoever. The black dragons look freaking amazing. And the main reason is I can get stainless steel in black. So... That's going to happen. <laughs> like, if I could get it in green, I'd get it in green. But, you know, there's that, that whole worry, because it's a weird world that we live in. As much as I wish I lived in the past just so that I could escape, like, social media and technology and honestly become a uh, chain mailer back in medieval days, 
probably a Japanese chain mailer working with the Japanese weave, because I almost seem to have like a Japanese influence to me. I sleep sleep on a shiki futon on the floor. Uh, oh, oh! One of the things that I just bought recently was a uh, buckwheat hull filled pillow, which uh, was the traditional pillow for you know back when they were using these uh, more predominantly. Uh, the floor mattresses. And also it just seemed just so classic and wonderful. And it comes in a wonderful, wonderful uh, weave. Uh, Tomba Gold is the name of the weave. It's from J-Life International. So I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. And also a new bed cover just because like, I don't honestly need a new bed cover for my Shiki Futon just yet, but it's one of those things of, I'm going to need one at some point in the future. Like, say, ten years into the future, or five years or whatever, the first one's going to be worn out enough that, uh, like, it's going to have faded spots, it's probably going to have holes. I've had to patch one hole already in it. Or is it two? It's going to have, like, you know, it's, it's going to be aged. So I bought a second one, which I'll probably kind of rotate between the two of them. Or feeling that I may just uh, stick with the one for a long, 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 long time. Then I have the backup waiting there. I'm not, not sure which system I'll go with. Probably kind of a combination of the two where I use one, primarily my red one. Then my other one is gold colored. So I'll use uh, this, uh, my red one primarily. Then break with the gold ones, say like, you know, once or twice a year. And then otherwise just kind of keep it uh, sitting away. And then I don't have to worry about it. So I may go with that method. That usually seems to be my method when I have two of something. Use one more or less permanently until it, you know, essentially wears out or breaks out. Or, yeah, breaks. And then I uh, pull out the second one. Or otherwise, yeah, do that mostly. But then break out the new one every so often just to... Uh, you know, make sure it's still working, kind of uh, get its pipes cleaned, and I'm thinking of a camping stove top right now. Of, you know, just kind of uh, give it a good solid burn for a few hours, and you know, get, get it used to the life again. Yeah, that's right, you're being used to cook food again. It's awesome, isn't it? I've got two really, really nice camp stoves that fit on top of those little fuel canisters. Uh, the Olympus Crux. And it's absolutely phenomenal. I love it. It folds up into a teensy tiny little, uh, like just flat thing, this uh, stove top. And that can uh, literally fit underneath uh, small fuel canisters. So it's like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And then I have a uh, titanium, like uh, basically a pot slash mug thing that uh, the camping fuel can fit into, the stove can fit into, a little tiny pot holder. Uh, yeah, you know, pot grabber, silicone finger thing uh, fits into there. Uh, it's got a lighter in there. I think it's got some spare, uh, like, wooden matches in there. May have gotten rid of those. Uh, my backpacking kit comes with a uh, sparker thing anyway. Like, I can't remember what it's made of, but, you know, you strike the metal against the rod and it creates a whole ton of sparks. So, one way or the other, I'm able to, uh, like, light it. And, yeah, it's just the perfect set there. Then I can make tea or camp food when I go out uh, biking or hammocking somewhere. Sit in a forest for a while and just just drift off in the trees. And that is so happening in summer. Just beyond beyond. <laughs> okay, so we tested a theory with my last dragon of uh, putting the chin rings in before the tooth rings, which will make sense in a few minutes here. And that worked out really poorly, like I managed, but it took twice as long, so I'm not using that system anymore. Okay, there we go. Okay, we have two stretches of European 4 in one Ah, ah, ah. And now, like I said, we sandwich them together. We have to make sure they're sandwiched together kind of uh, opposite from each other. Because, you know, if I flip it over, then they're essentially, well, not essentially, they're identical in the way that they're just sitting beside each other. And we don't want that. 
we want them to be uh, flipped over and opposite to each other. So we just did that. And now we'll take this work holder ring and clip it onto there. Come on. Then we got these two, you know, just sitting beside each other here. We'll do that to the other side where these two work holders are. Come on. And we'll remove one of you. I said remove one of you. We'll take the other one. And we'll attach it through these two rings. There we go, now the top and bottom of uh, this pair here is uh, connected. Which means I can easily take all of these quarter inch rings. I'm actually going to open up a handful of 3 16 inch rings as well right now. Because that's what I need for the teeth. This is going to be a toothed dragon, which uh, more or less all black dragons are. Because I can't get 732 inch rings in black. <laughs> I have made a uh, toothless uh, black dragon before, I think two of them honestly, which I don't know if I'll ever plan to do again, because it just takes an incredible amount of work to do. I have to individually clip each uh, like three or quarter inch ring down to 732, so like clip two millimeters off of every single ring, then retwist all of the rings back into loops again. And if I clipped slightly crooked so it doesn't close well, I have to like sand it down or file it down so that it closes properly again. And it's just an incredible amount of work that I really don't want to go through again, or if I can help it. Let's, let's be honest, I'm going to at some point in the future. Or like I said, uh, maybe go on a chainmail group and see if I can find a whole pile of people that also want blackened uh, 732 inch rings. can always hope. And uh, then, like, split the cost of uh, making this big giant batch of black in 732 with them. Which would be absolutely phenomenal. Or failing that, I go under the theory of just buy a whole ton of these, like this whole $2,000 worth of rings. I can only see this coming up a few years in the future. And uh, then essentially trying to sell the extra rings online, because I'm not going to need, like, 20 pounds of them. Very few, actually. There is 56 rings per dragon head, if I recall. And so 56 rings, or seven, well, 56 plus 5. So 61 732 inch rings per dragon. Per black dragon, assuming, because, you know, I'm not going to make all of them black. It does look really good, but still. So it really doesn't make sense to get 20 pounds of them. <laughs> just, just long story short. And we'll see what I can pull off in the future. Do, 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 do. Like one of the dragons that I have that uh, has the 732 inch head is uh, Charlemagne and Cleopatra. I wanted to make a dragon that had one toothed head and one regular head at the same time. So uh, she is my two headed uh, split tailed dragon. Like the tip of her tail is uh, split about an inch from the bottom. And I'm almost considering reworking that because the second two headed dragon that I made. Uh, more or less uh, shortly right after for a friend here in the paw. Uh, I ended up uh, figuring out a better way to uh, make the split in the tail. Like it was just so much more clean and elegant. So I may consider redoing Charlemagne and Cleopatra's tail to kind of match that. Cause it, like the second one that I made was less clumpy and just a lot cleaner. So I may try to duplicate that. Okay, we've seen together one side here. Like that side that I'm showing you is connected, this side is not. So let's do side two, shall we? I really kind of do wish that I had red eyes. I'm tempted to put pink eyes in, but I think that might clash. 
that one a lot today. Also, to go through four other rings. So I gotta make sure I'm doing that and don't skip one and accidentally three it. Though mildly tempting as that is, I have actually tried that method. I should try that again with quarter inch rings. Maybe I could design an entirely new style of head that uses something close to alien male, but not quite. but looks approximately the same and isn't AR specific. That's really the single only downside of alien male is that it's aspect ratio specific. Sort of like Jen's point linkage, the rings need to be the right size for the weave to kind of, uh, you know, keep its shape, keep its design, which is why I add the extra teeth to the uh, quarter inch rings because 732 inch rings hold their shape and design just nicely but uh, quarter inch rings are too big to do that. Here, let me kind of describe it to you for a second. Like these uh, edge rings, I can kind of slide uh, one over top of the other back and forth. Like now the right one is on top. Now the left one is on top. And I don't want that to happen. So which is why we add the extra tooth rings in for the quarter inch rings. I do have toothed silver dragons too. Just tossing that out there. Okay, so. This is the tip of the mouth here. And we want to get rid of one of these. Where are you? There you are. And the other one is going to take the place of both of those to kind of make the uh, lips of, of the mouth, so to speak. Or rather just kind of close the mouth. I may end up replacing this with a 3 16 inch ring later. But, okay, one of my deities really wants me to change it out with the 3 16 inch ring now. Looks like it's God. Oh, no, my mom. Hey, mom. She's in heaven. Hey. Yeah, my mom wants me to try it with 3 16 here. Provided it can even be pulled off. Wow, you are putting up a fight today. Oh, 3 16 inch ring. Oh, 3 16 so oh, 3 16 mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, 3 16 so oh, 3 16s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your ring is solid and round. Oh, 3 16s so oh, 3 16 you're hard to close in this spot. Okay, come on. Uh, what time am I sitting at? Almost one. Ooh. Ooh, time is... Fleeting. Yep, that's too tight, I think. I don't like that. That'll make the dragon pucker. 
Where is that other? Seven thirty two inch ring. And it disappeared. Stop running for me. There you are. Possibly seven, uh, seven thirty-two inch rings. <laughs> Just because I'm hoping this works out better for the tip of the mouth. There we go. Okay, now I need to add the teeth on the side. Quarter inch rings, you are all done. All we have left are 3 sixteenths inch rings. 3 sixteenths, oh, 3 sixteenths. They sung this song a lot, 3 sixteenths. The song about ring size is 3 sixteenths, so oh, I do love my 3 sixteenths. Okay, now. Come on, eyes, tell me what I want to see. Come on, there we are. Come on. One tooth. And kind of add on to the side over there like that. Oh goodness, we need to make the uh, big open mouth ring yet. <laughs> okay, well I'm kind of, uh, so I apologize about the snorting there. My nose is being silly right now. Okay. Come on. Stop catching two rings. I need you to catch only one ring. There you go. Come on. I hate it when it tries to go around an extra ring inside of there and it's like, well, now I'm fighting with you for an extra 10 seconds. And unfortunately the old T word is starting to catch up to me time. And it's all like, okay, I gotta rush, I gotta rush, I gotta rush. Art is the one place where I can't rush, but I have to. And it's frustrating, you know? Yeah, uh, timelines. Like I said, pretty much only because this is an art trade. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even made a dragon today. But since someone's like essentially already waiting for this, I need to get it done. Otherwise, I'd take a break. Just not chain mail for a while. I know after I've done all of my art trade dragons, it's debatable how long it'll be before I start going into my, like, making even more. Okay, yeah, we're hooking it onto this one. Next. These teeth also cause a whole lot of uh, extra time use. Because they take an extra, a lot of extra work to be honest. 
I need to put them all in now so that all of the rings are lined up and uh, stay properly. Then I need to take some of them out to put the mouth ring in, and take some of them out to make the chin ring, and then put them back in after that. And it's just kind of convoluted, you know? Put rings in, take them out, put them in, take them out. And it more or less has to be that way, just... That's just the nature of the beast. I've tried doing it without doing that, without, uh... Yeah, like I said, that was my last dragon where it just worked out so much worse. <laughs> so much more difficult. Okay, we've got all the teeth in. Awesome! We've got our modified alien male dragon, or just alien male strip here. It's not quite a dragon head yet, because now you need your mouth ring that you bite down on. And for that, we need good old coat hanger wire. And because I'm going to be mucking with this for the next few minutes, I'll explain to you why coat hanger wire. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Sorry for the sudden uh, change of pace here. I found another one of this type of clasp. So, Albert! Albert, you're getting an upgrade! Albert's been using this uh, binder ring for, like, ages now. Oh. Oh, one of my babies is pushing it. Albert wants his uh, knife to uh, get his new... Because uh, Jill is borrowing his knife for the time being. The uh, one that I etched their signature on with. So, Jill, we're going to have to give that up for now, because Albert really wants this. Okay, so we'll get your head in. Let's do it kind of proper, like. We'll do the body. Then I've always considered the leg to be a front leg. Then the mid-back of the tail, and the tail tail, and then the knife for etching, then the little pokey for shipping. To attach them to my shipping shoes. Yay! You've been upgraded! Oh my goodness, you have a proper clasp! Oh, Albert's awesome. Albert's happy. Oh, and I also have a little vial of dragon food here. I can't 100% recall what's inside of it. I made it during the uh, making of butters. I should have marked it down in actuality. There is uh, activated charcoal. Oh goodness, I'd have to ask. I should send them an email. Because there was four possible ingredients to put in there. And I have mostly two. A good chunk of number three, and just the tiniest hint of number four. Okay, where am I? I am making a coat, a coat hanger ring. Do 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 I do 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 I do 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 I do 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 Okay, Shade, come here. Let's compare to your ring. Oh my goodness, your ring is shiny. You've been with me for a while and I've taken you on many an adventure. Normally your dragon shines up to you. This dragon's already shined up. <laughs> Though I am going to uh, straighten your ring just a little bit because I kind of saw that it wasn't as round as it could be. Maybe you bumped it or something one day. So we're just going to adjust you just slightly. Just slightly, Shade. The dragon of meditation, that's what you were. Loves to sit and meditate. Very good friend of Midnight, uh, the Dragon of Darkness, who also likes to uh, sit in closets or in like dark spaces and meditate there. So I've got a few very meditative dragons. Dragon of the Void, Charlemagne and Cleopatra, I'm fairly certain you like to uh, meditate. Okay, that's about good for a mouth ring. Okay, now let's clip you off. What? Oh, lock shot. There we go. 
Not the cleanest cut on earth, but that really doesn't matter because what we do is we file the ends uh, together so that they make a really, really, really smooth connection. So let's go about doing exactly that right now, or rather in just a few seconds. Okay. I'll try and show ya. So yeah, you can see the uh, edge of the, the top of the ring there. Focus. Focus. Yeah, hopefully you can see the top of the ring right there. It's kind of like a little bit open. You can see the gap. And we're going to be making it more like, come here shade, this. Focus. Other side. Where the seam is almost invisible. So that is our goal there. And that is what we shall do. So I have a metal file amusingly called the bastard file. The actual name of it, who'd have thought? And we're going to here, do a little something like this to pry open the ring just enough to get the file into there. I found that that's, this is the easiest method. And I don't have a convenient place to file my filings into. So it's just going to be on my work surface for lack of a better option. Okay, let's see how that goes. Let's open you like that. Kind of pinch you closed. Reclose you again. Could be a little bit better. Just a little bit better. I don't like it just yet. Oop, there we go. Come on. Okay, let's try that. It was almost there and I don't want to file off too much material. Because, you know, the ring gets smaller with every filing. Okay, that's not quite good either. Third time's the charm. Let's see if third time's the charm. Nope, don't slide off. I'm trying to pry you open. What did I pry you open with before? I need a better ring prior opener. You? No. That must have been you somehow. There we go, that method works. Okay, come on. Come on. Let's see what that did. Just a little bit of filing. Oh, I hear a crow outside, or a blackbird. I don't know if I've seen blackbirds specifically, but there's lots of crows in the area, and ravens. Maybe they're all ravens. I know, they all kind of look the same. You know, one has red on its wing and stuff, but I don't know the specifics between those ones. I know sparrows brown, cardinals are red. <laughs> There we go, that's pretty decent. Yeah. Nice seam now. Okay, so let's go back to opening up these two tooth rings here. One and two. Come on, come on. What time am I at? Oh goodness, almost a one o'clock. I 
hope I don't have to make this a two-part video. That'd be a nuisance, and honestly, I don't have time for a two-part video. <laughs> Prior to when I want this done by, I'd make it somehow. I'd shove it in somewhere. Open this. Okay, come on, we want to go under this one, through here, come on, come on. Stop fighting. And why is this one ring open slightly? Just to cause, like, complication. I see a ring that's closed poorly. It's nearly impossible to get at. Can't even imagine why you would have opened. There was no stress to you. Okay. Come on. Through there, through there, over here. There you go. There you, there you go. Where did that other tooth ring go? For heaven's sakes, now there's something wrong with the face. No, no, there you are. How did you vanish? Okay, come on. Come on. Okay, now these two quarter inch rings, we'll pop them back in. Now it'll really connect up the mouth ring here. Now we've got to try and work around all these teeth rings here. Okay, we need to go through here. Are we going through that one? Yes, but we're going behind that one. I said behind that one. Come on. Oh, apologies, that was getting to me.
Okay, can I close this ring? I don't want to close you around, but I want to to be on the other side of that. No. No, no, no. Okay. Now you go past here. Past that past that point. Just just a bit. So I can close you. Just a bit. So you stop trying to connect onto this ring. Which is where it's causing all of the problem right now. Come on now. There you go. Let's try and pop the tooth ring in again. Which in and of itself is going to be a bit iffy. Okay, no, no, I think we're good actually. Okay, side two. Side two. Then we need to do the chin. So this is going to be a three and a half hour drag in here. Because <laughs> you, my little friend, are deciding to take more time than usual. here, behind that, through this, over that, please over that, just pinch you closed, which gives me a little bit of leeway with the pliers to be able to close you. Okay. Okay. Oh, nope, we gotta go through this ring, then through this ring, and down, and close you up. Okay, we've got the mouth ring in. I'm honestly not the happiest with it. I'm really not. How can I fix that? What is the problem here? These two tooth rings seem to be stopping it from folding downwards. It only folds upwards and I don't like that. So let's try going like that and like this. And if this works, this might be my new standard for tooth dragons. So this is something that I've kind of always struggled with, is how to make the uh, mouth ring work well on the dragon. And that works really well right now, so, well, there you go. <laughs> okay, now the chin ring. The chin ring is the next trickety piece. Oop, and let's just straighten this ring out slightly, there you go. 
Okay, that's a backup here, I think. Yeah. This ring I have to take out and flip around inside of the head and reconnect back in in a gridlock style. This is one of the most difficult rings to do in the dragon. Because it always puts up a fight. So we're going to do it like that. And we'll come around to this side and we need to connect you through there. So we're going to take this tooth ring off. <laughs> And you, we're going to open. And rotate you back into the head here. Come around and connect through that chin ring like we want. Come back over here. Through, come on. No sliding. Okay, I need you to go through this ring, which seems almost impossible. Come on. There you go. Wait. No slipping. There you go. Coax it through. Holy goodness, it's getting dark in here, it feels like. I think the sun just went behind a cloud outside. Come on, don't be like that. It's like an eighth of a millimeter off and it's fighting. And my hair is in my face and getting in the way. <laughs> okay. Holy heavens, this one is putting up a fight. And that's why I don't like chain mailing before work. Just, I hate timelines, you know? I hate having to watch a clock. That's, that's the worst possible way to live, is to watch a clock. You have to do X by X time, I'd rather die. Come on. Come on now. Why is it fighting so much? Holy heavens. This one ring just... Just refusing to play nice. Okay, that's done. Okay, now we have one more to go. 
There's almost a 0% chance of doing this with the tooth still in. So let's take that tooth out now. <sighs> Wait a minute, what's going on here? Okay, if we can get you to go through here. Okay. Okay. Now, can I put the teeth back in? One. I told you tooth dragons are extra are extra hard. I told you. Only they didn't look so damn cool. Okay, you need to go through this ring. Up over this one. And then through it. Come on. Said through it. Back down again. Back down. Okay, and then we close it. Go back and watch the video for uh, Daryl and Daryl. You will see exactly what I'm talking about with doing the uh, teeth before versus doing the teeth after. As much as I fought with it here, I fought with it ten times as much there. <laughs> so, woo! We got the dragon chin. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We are one step closer. 
which is good. Because now we have to attach a dragon head to a dragon body. What time am I sitting at? 118. <sighs> hope I don't have to uh, postpone the end of this. I really hope. Uh, I wish I could call in sick today. Just so I could do the adoption scroll immediately after. That's, that's what I'd so much prefer to do. But it's not really an option. Really, the only enjoyable time to do art is on days off. If you have to keep to a schedule, may as well not even start. That's the honest truth right there. Anyone tells you otherwise, they're being a fool. Okay, now the neck. This one's another bit of a tricky one. We'll see if we can do it pretty easily. So you need to go in there. Then flip it around. Open the other side. And then, whoop. Come on now. Through there. Come on. There we go. Close you. Yay, you can breathe! <sighs> Dragon's getting finished. Slowly but surely now. We did most of the hard parts. I wonder, wonder how. Okay. There we go. Now we just need to get the uh, edges of the head there for which I like to use a few 3 16 inch rings. Drop it. Drop the ring. Okay. Come on. No clicking. We're in a no clicking zone. What was that? <laughs> okay, I think I'd like it better if it went through that other ring there. So let's open you up a touch. Ooh, ooh, that's not bad right there. Let's try that. That's decent. That's decent. The sides of the neck. I like to do something for the sides of the neck. I don't like the head being attached by only two rings. Just, just doesn't feel right. So we're going through here and through these two. <sighs> okay. 
Okay, let's let's do a quick test. Pop that under there. Pop this under there. Do you stay? <laughs> Come on, under. I'm not even trying to connect anything, just get one ring to slide underneath another for aesthetic purposes. Ooh, apologies for that, the people upstairs are moving some stuff around apparently. Okay, that's pretty good too. They stay pretty well connected down there. I like that. I like that. Let me show you the neck there. The dragon necks tend to be a lot different from one dragon to the next. Focus on that. Yeah, there you go. All inside of that area. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Woo! And now you got your eyes. And now all of the dragons get to suggest names for the dragon. All of my deities and myself. Now I'm feeling this is a girl dragon. I need a pen. Seriously, I've got to buy like just a gross of like a hundred pens. I guess that'd be like 140 pens. Just have them spread out across the apartment so that no matter where I am, within three feet of me is a pen. <laughs> Okay, God's putting down Joseph, thinking it's a guy. Elijah, no, Elise, maybe. Mm. You've got Amber. Oh, Poole doesn't like her name being reused here. Tannis is the Divine Feminine there. Hmm. Sylvia I'm gonna put. And Mother Earth isn't, hasn't come up with anything just yet. Oh, Mother Earth is putting Susan. Okay, let's work on some eyes. We need a pair of three sixteenths inch rings. Although actually in the past, I've been using 532 inch rings, for which I have none. I can try and clip these down. Or I can see how they work on their own. Let's try clipping you down. I know it's taking extra time, and time is the one thing that I do not have right now. But let's just have a test try. No! No dropping the ring. Yep, not fond of building on a timeline. <laughs> right now my brain is like, okay, every second it counts. <laughs> and that is just a horrid way to be. It's also unfortunately the way of most of my life these days. Every second counts. Which is probably why I want to sleep in most days and relax and not care about the world. Every second counts, and I'm not worrying about them. There you go. Two, two 532 inch rings. This one should be filed just a little bit. Now 
No, don't you go falling down now. There we go, that's much better. Much better closure. Okay. Oh, and Mother Earth is changing her vote to Erica. Okay, we might have a decent eye position here. Whew. Oh, come on, little dragon. It's not bad, it's a decent eye position. Hmm. Number two. Number two. Number two, I've got to put an eye number two. I think I might not like the way this kind of gives the dragon a bit of a sad eye type of thing going on. That's mainly because of these two overlapping here, is it possible that that can be adjusted? Not really, no. That is the nature of this dragon, is that these two rings overlap. Kind of a tired looking dragon if I keep the eyes there. I think we're gonna move them. It was close, but. Okay. Maybe like this. Now the eyes are really loose then. That's decent right there though. Let's try that. Oh, come on. And you have a one millimeter wide space to work inside of. Oh, those flop over forwards a whole lot. Don't know if I like that at all. I was hoping they'd stay upright. Would you please stop falling off of the table? Nah, she's vibrant and full of life. She's got to be have active open eyes. That's decent. That right there is decent. And also those two rings that were causing you a problem before saying they'd overlap, stopped overlapping. <laughs> Chainmail! It tricks you sometimes. There we go. Okay. So we go in through here, up through here. Close you up.
Mother Earth, Earth, Earth is making a last second change back to Susan again. Hmm. Mainly because she heard the dragon calling it. Hmm. Yep. Wow, seriously. Okay, so this dragon is named Susan. Ah, Susan, the dragon of life. Okay. Susan, you need legs. Oh, those eyes came out really good. Hmm. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. One hour. That'll take me to 2.30. Which is basically the exact minimum that I need to get ready for work after this. So we are flying really close to the wire here. But we'll see what we can do. If I have to wash my hands at work instead of home, then so be it. I am going to be so fucking tired tomorrow. It is not even going to be funny. bother to count here. I'm just going to open a whole ton of rings and close a whole ton of rings. Then we'll start making legs and uh, go from there. And a fun fact, it's exactly 108 rings inside of the legs. Ooh. <laughs> then we need one final ring after that to finish the dragon, the one that attaches the clasp. Which she's going to be uh, finding her picking out herself, most likely. A lot of dragons like that. They kind of dig around inside of that little slot there and come out with a clasp. I'm kind of tempted to refill up the uh, like bin, but... I don't know, I think I'd rather uh, this batch be cleared out. And then I put fresh clasps in. Just, you know, first in, first out kind of doesn't really make sense with chainmail, but I still want to do it kind of thing. <laughs> A little bit of my restaurant work days kicking in there. FIFO. First in, first out. Also a good policy for your fridge. Which I imagine most people do just by default because it makes sense. <laughs> Honestly, I'm tempted to make a full aluminum dragon so that I could have a dragon that has like red rings and red legs and everything. I may yet. I'm going to be ordering up a whole ton of uh, 3 16 inch uh, aluminum rings uh, just so I can make more uh, rosaries. Ooh. Make more rosaries, uh, this one. Hmm. This other one here, if you've uh, seen my uh, Facebook page, is essentially my cat. I have the stone that represents my cat inside of there. Hmm. I like to keep that one close to my chest. Both of them, really. I wore it to work actually uh, yesterday actually, like my uh, cat pouch, my jack pouch, to uh, see if it would be like noticeable. I kind of more or less forgot that it was on me, but uh, uh, honestly I don't know if I should, uh, I don't think I should wear it to work every day as much as I'd want to. Like this is one of those types of things that I'd uh, like to never remove from my person, but Healthcare, and I'm trying to make a good impression here, and I'm still in my, uh, whatchamacallit, probation period, so I gotta look as uh, prim and proper and good as I can. I'm taking a risk wearing the rosaries as is, but at least that's a religious thing.
Sorry I'm being so quiet now, I'm kind of uh, lost in contemplation a little bit. Thinking about my own life a little bit there. Like, uh, the breakup between uh, my ex and I was, you know, not the greatest on earth. It was uh, very sudden and abrupt, and I don't think she saw it coming whatsoever. Like, I was the one that uh, called that halt to everything. And, like, we never communicated. She refused to communicate with me. She was emotionally abusing me towards the end. It's... It, it was not a good place to be in. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I ran away in the span of two days from, like, deciding to, like, split. Every single one of my possessions was gone from uh, the apartment that we had been living in. And uh, I left her with virtually everything. Just... I was just escaping. I was literally running away. And I think she knew that. And I don't think she even realized that she was abusing me the way that she was. Like, she she must have known a little bit. You'd have to be pretty just... Must have known a little bit. But... It's been on my mind. Then that whole lost period of my life happened. And uh, I lost my wedding ring, like, uh, from that whole period. And I was contemplating. Do I actually want to go back to the, like, place where I got my wedding ring and see if I can buy another one? just in memory of her type of thing. Because just during that lost period, I lost almost every single article related to her. It's almost as if she's completely vanished from my life despite us having spent seven years together. And that's just sad. It makes me feel sad. I don't even have a photo of her, like, to be honest. So I'm going to print out one of my digital photos of her sometime soon and uh, put that on the wall just because. And, uh, yeah. Don't know if I want to get a wedding ring, though. Like, buy another one as a memento of my past. I should, really. Like, even the engagement ring, literally every single possible article or object from the marriage is gone. Except for one empty box. I have one photo box that doesn't even have the photo album in it anymore. And that's all I have. Yeah. They say a lot can happen in a year or two years. I went from arguably the greatest life that I've known to being in the worst place that I've ever experienced. All in one year. Spirituality, yo. <laughs> No, to be fair, spirituality has uh, done me very well since then. It just started out, ex well, it started out well, and then a whole pile of hatred was dumped on me, unfortunately, needlessly, causelessly. Just a whole ton of hatred was dumped on me. My life was literally ruined in almost every possible human aspect. And then I recovered. I didn't die. That's unfortunately one of the biggest uh, mantras that I have nowadays. At least I'm not dead. Or at least I'm still alive. That's the one. At least I'm still alive. What about this? At least I'm still alive. But you lost this. At least I'm still alive. You'll never see this person again. At least I'm still alive. It did want me dead. Multiple spirits. Like, specifically told me, I want you dead. I want you to commit suicide. Like, hey, how's that for a uh, loving uh, deity, hey? But that's the one that I uh, angered and who decided to follow me around for, ye for a year, basically just running my life into the ground over and over and over and over again, just... Just putting all of her ire and all of her hatred purely into me and me alone. And I didn't deserve it. She admits I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Yep, just, just my life run through the ringer. Sorry for prattling on about that. It's one of those things that, you know, when else am I going to get this off my chest than aside from when I'm, like, doing something like this? 
It's life, hey? Hey, Susan? Life can be good. Life can be bad. Keeps going, though. That's the thing. It keeps going. And I'm still alive. I'm still recovering. There's still a lot of nights when I'm just like, you know, sad or depressed or crying or whatever. Just... Just still accepting the absolute monumental losses that I occurred or incurred. Honestly, don't know how I'm alive right now, to be honest. Should have committed suicide years ago. Didn't. Too strong for that. Certainly tried. The demon wanted me to plunge a... Uh, pair of scissors into my neck or into my head. Didn't get it, obviously. But it tried. It tried to get me arrested. Didn't work. <sighs> Made me cut all of my hair off, so that sucked. Rocked the bald look for a year though, and that was pretty awesome to be honest. Bit glad I did that. How many other people can say that they, uh, like, are, were a bald woman for a solid year? Like, it's an experience. Do I want to do it again? No, I want long hair again. I want a ponytail, that thing that I had before they made me cut off my hair. Uh, it's for the best that I wasn't rich back then. Because if I was, they would have ruined my life even more. Having me perform, like, medical... Procedures on myself to like laser off my hair or something like that Just you know just continue to ruin my life So poverty is probably best in that regard Now we're making dragon legs cuz we've got all the rings <laughs> Don't worry, Susan. You're gonna be done today. I have a feeling. I think we're out of the, uh, you know, difficulty spots. The neck, that can have some difficulties. The chin and head, that, that's where most of the difficulties are. The, like, tail, yeah, there's not too many difficulties involved with that. The back, yeah. We got through all the hard parts here. Now it's just coasting to the end. Now it's just doing the legs. Which is a bit where I see my sight or see my life right now is just coasting. Like, okay, through whatever weird circumstances, I'm in the Paw Manitoba now. It's a tiny little northern town. Well not tiny, like three thousand people, something like that. But a fairly small northern community. You know, they have a hospital and stuff, and I'm working in the care home there. And uh it's not where I wanna be. It's not where I ever or where I ever expected to be. But life, you know? Huh. So I don't see myself being up here forever. Two years? I can see me doing two years up here. Maybe three if I end up spending a whole ton of money. Like, who knows, maybe I'll... Like, I'm right now uh, in the process of repurchasing essentially my lost life and upgrading a handful of things because... You know, I lost my other things I made as well, I uh, get higher quality just stuff to replace it. Because I'm making money now. Spen essentially, I'm spending myself down to zero right now. Just to rebuy life. And then I'll just more or less stockpile and hoard money after that. For like the two years or whatever that I'm here. I keep on thinking three years maybe, but... Again, I'd have to somehow spend just an absolute ton of money somehow. Like to drop another 10 grand on something? I don't see me buying a car anytime soon, or if I do it's gonna be like a 10 year old beater that's $2,000. Honestly don't see that happening. If I'm moving to London, England or anywhere like that, it's probably going to be somewhere that's very very busy and where parking is very very limited and I don't want to deal with like extremely limited expensive parking. So, nuts to that. You know, I kind of want to make the nails on my dragon a different color, but I can't really. 
Red, I think, would look a little bit too dark or evil. Silver? I could try silver uh, claws. Not sure how uh, the recipient would feel about that. But let's try it for just a minute, okay? Let's try it. You can always change these out, which is debatable whether I'd do on camera or not, again, just due to timelines and having to go to work immediately after recording today. <laughs> Speaking of, what time am I sitting at? 1.45, 1.48? Yeah, yeah, I'm honestly going to be lucky if I can uh, get these legs attached. Okay. So here's a potential foot. Basically, a uh, black leg with silver claws. How do I feel about that? Kind of liking it, not really liking it. I kind of like it and I kind of don't at the same time. It looks too odd. If this were one of my own dragons, one of the ones to be added to the nest that could be purchased down the road, Absolutely in a heartbeat I'd do this, but this is for someone who like gave me specific colors that they like And this seems too out there. So as much as I want to I can't I just can't That will be a treat for another dragon God saying silver Oh, Divine Feminine, do you have any input? Nothing from her. The pool? The pool's putting silver. So we have two spiritual votes for silver, one for black, and then there's me. I just kind of left them off for the moment. Because it almost feels like this dragon needs them. But... I don't know if she'll accept that. Okay, that was someone that messaged me in the morning that uh, I mentioned at the start of this video, uh, someone I called just as I was getting up that I hadn't heard from in six months, so it's one of those, uh, okay, I have to take this. So they just messaged me again for the first time in, well, three hours. <laughs> And it's like, okay, no, that was that was fun catching up, but I'm in the middle of, of a recording. I'm almost done, and I've got to get to work, like, right now. So, they are unfortunately going to have to wait. Like I said, timelines, they're the worst thing on Earth. What do I call it? The dreaded T word time. One of my least favorite words in the English language. That said, <laughs> I need to make a dragon of time. Not on that negative a note, but just in general. Takes his time with things, can do things quickly, always has a watch on him, sometimes two just for funsies. Specifically bought a really really loud clock with a really loud clicking because they like to hear the ticking of it Owns three grandfather clocks <laughs> Yeah, the dragon of time I think that's inside of my dragon book I'm tempted to put it into my dragon book, except my hands are currently busy. Seriously, to be Dr. Octopus and just have extra arms that can, like, do stuff for you, that would be beyond heaven. Because just with the way that I am and the way that the world works...
Ooh, I have a little section of uh, foxtail there. Forgot about that. That's going to be part of a dragon in the long run. And speaking of, okay, here's the second leg finished minus the claws. Let's get another work holder out. Oh, let's get both of them out. Let's get our third leg built. I apologize, the end of this video, or at least the past hour maybe, hasn't been the most musical. But I've been more contemplating life than anything else. Man, you truly are the dragon of life, ain't ya? God's kind of chain goes about two black nails. Pretty much the entire reason behind that one is that, uh, like, this is for a known person. A known person who wanted a black dragon, not a black dragon with silver nails. And that's, that's the other thing about making dragons for others, like, when they specifically ask for it. It takes the creativity away. Everyone's kind of wavering on the issue right now, because the dragon's kind of asking for it. Really asking for it. Kind of asking for it. But it's not what was asked for. Can I make a custom change on my own? When it's not something that was requested? I much prefer to make dragons on my own. Make dragons beforehand and then sell them later. Never mind making a dragon for a person on, like, on a request. That is exactly the opposite of what I am. Yeah, I think we're going to save the silver nails. Mr. This is a good life lesson right here, at least for me. Save your creativity for when you can be creative. If something is asked for, give them what they asked for. Don't go changing it. Guess I could message her. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put silver toes on the dragon because she's kind of been asking for it. And uh, we'll end the video there. And uh, then we're going to, or I'm going to message the person that uh, asked for the dragon, or rather, art trading for the dragon, and be all, hey, your dragon's asking for silver nails, but I don't know if you like it, so I can remove them if you want, but, uh, you're, you know, here's a photo, let me know what you think. Or silver feet. Maybe I should call it silver feet. Did I want to do another few rings uh, aside from that then? What's my timeline at? Two o'clock. Come on. Come on. Okay, at that point, that would actually mean that I need these two to be silver. Those two folded up can avoid being. Okay, we're going to try something.
Yeah, I'm feeling better about this now. Thanks all. So we're going to do, have to do some minor modifications, more or less exactly what I'm doing right now, to those other two feet. And then, heaven knows when I'm actually going to be capable of uh, changing them to black if I need to. But I'll have to find a way to do that. And you like scant 20 minute gap of time that I'm going to have between now and like the end of next week. Seriously, my life has basically been that busy. Or rather, is about to become that busy. Got karate, just three days a week. Holy goodness, three days a week? I must be half insane even beginning it because that is an insane time commitment. Absolutely insane. You know, the classes are 45 minutes long, which is kind of short, but then you have to take into account... Hmm. Did I want more of this black? Let's do a quick... Oh, fuck. I hate testing things when I have no time to test things. It's like, okay, this could look better, so I have to test it. But I have literally no time, because I have to be at work in an hour. So I'm just kind of quickly snapping it into place. We're going to quickly take out the previous ring. Just in whatever manner I can, I don't care. That dreaded T word, hey? You can't even think straight. Yeah, with cute little white paws. All four of them white. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay.
Okay, as I modify that first leg, to give it a white paw or a silver paw, trying to picture if this dragon is going to have uh, two silver. Sorry, I'm kind of facing away from the camera here. Better for my back at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if the uh, dragon is going to have uh, two silver paws or four silver paws. And right now I'm thinking it's going to be all four. So we've got two of them here. Hmm. And we need to open up a pile more of these. I'm pretty sure we need to close some as well. Time check. Twelve or two oh eight. I am really pushing this. Hopefully that's enough silver rings. I think I'm gonna, the bare minimum, I'm going to need another three. There we go. Okay, I think that'll do it. Now, what is going on here? Need to replace some of these rings. And replace this section with silver rings.
Okay. Okay, we're not actually doing too bad. I forgot that I had this paw mostly made there. So, whoop! One more to go. One more leg. One, two, three, four. Come on, Dragon, you're getting close. We're almost done, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm Just a few more rings. Two open ones here. And this will give me the dragon's knee. Okay, now we spoke to the silver rings. Ooh. Oh, and I think I actually counted them out proper. Hey. And we still have to attach the legs to the body. Again, timeline. 2.15. All right. All right, we have a little bit to work with. We have a little bit. You don't have to worry too much either. I am wearing my work scrubs under here. <laughs> And there goes the fridge again, turn it on again. Okay, there we go. All of these rings can go back, minus one. That is going to be the clasp ring. One of my deities wants me to repair one of these uh, mangled black rings that I had before, that I bent out of sheer frustration. Sometimes in life you need to repair things that you're frustrated with. 
There we go, that's decent. There we go. Soup wipe. One moment again, I apologize. <sighs> okay, let's attach some dragon legs. Woo, the removal of the ring holders, or of the uh, work holders. Okay, and now... Okay, we need to get that up and through here. The front legs are a little bit difficult because we have to work around the uh, shoulder scales there. Which just make it a little bit of a tighter area to work in. Come on. Nope, you go through here and then through here. There you go. Come on. There we go. One leg. Woo! And the others. Yep, even Susan's not sure how she feels about the white paws. So we will double check with the recipient and see what they think of them. Okay, and the back legs. Wait, did I even attach this properly? Something looks off. That is off. Okay, not quite the back legs. There we go. There we go, two legs down, two to go. Okay, I think we're going with this, and Last leg. Aha, <laughs> the last leg of the journey. <laughs>
Just comparing here quick. Okay. Okay, there we go. Mm, you can crawl. Yeah, let's get that clasp on you. Let's get that clasp on you. Did you want to pick it out? Thought for a second that she wanted me to pick it out, but nope. She wanted it on her own. <laughs> Pop the clasp on. Woo! The final ring, the three sixteenths. There you go. Awesome, awesome. And now your signature, because every dragon gets a signature. Albert, you and your wonderful new clasp. I need the knife from here. And where would you like your signature to be? You wanted it a little bit lower down on the back, that's okay. Let's give me your KH. And Susan is born. Mm. Susan, the dragon of life is here to say hi to you. <laughs> dragon of life, you are here now. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Mm. So that wraps up another uh, song, song a day, another uh, dragon making here. So uh, stay tuned for the next one and uh, have a wonderful night all. Rare.